Some people say the point of existence is to leave something behind when you, well, no longer exist. This goes with the idea that as long as you are remembered, in a way, you are still alive. After all, memories are what make us who we are. In the quest of being remembered, some people build monuments, some people write books, some people make art, some people make shitty online videos, but who really cares about them, right? But memories are a lot more fragile than we may think. Today we look at a world where one struggles not only to be remembered, but remembering in order to clarify one's own existence. Today on Soul Show, we review Remember. <laughs> Remember Me is a 2013 game developed by Don't Nod Entertainment and published by Capcom. And right when I saw that little Capcom label, I did what I do every time when I play a Capcom game. I assumed I'd be playing some kind of specialist or agent and I'd be going on missions while some little dude in the corner talked to me but that character would be like really mysterious, you know? Be ready to move when I say. Who are you? I'm the voice you have to listen to if you want to live. Hey, what's up? Yeah, what you need? Uh, yeah, do you mind picking up the phone? Um, yeah, why? Because I fucking called it! Anyway, in this world set in Neo Paris, best name ever, memories are like data. For instance, you can share your memories with other people, you can get rid of memories you don't want to keep anymore, or when you go to prison, you lose your memories. And corrupt organizations have managed to use memories to make society go from a cool, sci-fi, clean-cut genius to an old, dirty, confused, crazy person strapped in a straitjacket and complete with Alzheimer's. And in this world, you play as Nilan, a memory hunter who, let me guess, is suffering from amnesia? I'm here to get my memory back. Of course, and on top of increasing sales by making sure her front half isn't facing the cover art, she has a unique power of remixing memories. The best way I can describe this is saying how it works in gameplay. First, you can delve into a person's mind and you can see their memories via cutscenes. By making subtle little changes in the environment or changing just the slightest things in the memory, they change drastically, and the person remembers a false memory that didn't even happen. Or in other words, the ending to Inception, but with memories instead of dreams. I always loved remixing memories, because one, it was really cool. Second, it gave a break from the long hours of combat and platforming. And the combat and the platforming, they're... eh? Sure, the platforming, it allows you to see this beautiful world that they have made. It looks awesome, and it's a lot of fun at first, but it gets boring really fast, and by the end of the game, it's just painful. And the combat, which has adopted the Batman Arkham system of punching and dodging and punching and dodging, which has become the norm for action games as of late, it's not that great. It does a couple of things to vary it up a little bit. You get this cool bomb move, you get this long range attack that's really cool, and it tries to introduce this system where you can customize your combos, right? So you can make a combo that like specializes in helping your health, you can make a combo specializing in helping your cooldowns, which will allow you to hit more bombs and shit like that. But in the end, there are only four combos. And I'll admit it, I usually just spam the same combos in these games anyway, but I like to know that that is my fault and not the games, okay? But combat and all that gamey stuff aside, let's talk about the story. When I first started the game in the first couple hours, I thought the story was amazing. I thought it was so unique, and it had the tools to start a real conversation about perception and our memories. And with so many amnesia stories out there, I still don't feel like one really has done it justice. It's just used it as a plot tool rather than the centerpiece for an actual story. And it's the same here. While I like the story a lot, it doesn't go where I hoped it would. 
And at one point, it really starts to feel like one of those games. Those games from Japan's the Bayonettas and the confusing and the plot lines and the story and the never endingness. You know what I'm talking about. The ones that make you feel like. I'll show you a plot. My plot line is, this this plot plot line is so thick and you must accept your destiny. You are the, the chosen one. Will full engulf the metal. This friendship. is the best Unity. story ever. Compassion. You only have 96 hours. I'll Come show on, you let's a plot. Do it. Put your Kingdom heart Hearts in the cards. Is you gotta I'm catch them all. That was a the ghost, light in the, the darkness. And I can make what the love fuck to is going on? This, stuff. this, this is the is best so story ever. You only have 96 hours. The Come on, let's do it. What the fuck's going on? All that aside, I want to say what works in this game and then what doesn't. The story could have been cleaned up a lot and that goes with the gameplay too. But it's a fresh breath of air and it looks amazing and it sounds wonderful. And when it's good, it's gold. So I guess you should play the game because it looks and sounds nice. I'm the best reviewer ever. And with all that being said, I award Remember Me a 3 out of 4 and the sole badge of approval. And with that, please subscribe, have a wonderful day, check out today's feature channel, stick around for the credits because I'll have a spoiler talk of Remember Me where I'll talk about it in depth. And with that, have a wonderful day. Don't forget about me! And with that, I leave you.